CBS Radio. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call the Atlantis crew on ISS for a voice check. Hey, good morning, Atlantis crew. This is CBS News Radio at Kennedy Space Center. How do you hear us? Radio at Kennedy Space Center. How do you hear us? Uh, we have you loud and clear at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, good morning, uh, Commander Chris Ferguson, well, pilot, morning, Marine Colonel Doug Hurley. It's Peter King and Bill Harwood at KSC, and Bill's got our first question. Well, it's just it's an obvious question right off the bat, guys. First of all, great to see you again. Uh, yeah, I know you got GPC-4 back up and running. Can you give us some sense of how that's doing and your confidence that that guy's going to hang in there? Your confidence that that guy's going to hang in there? Uh, well, it actually failed last night. I think it was about an hour and a half after we fell asleep. Uh, the alarm went off, uh, and uh, I think we all looked at each other and <laughs> had that uh, had that bright-eyed, sort of bushy-tailed look and uh, raced up to the flight deck. Uh, I'll tell you, the folks on the ground did a nice job helping us get through that. We brought up another GPC to help us out with the functions that Four was produce uh, that was uh, performing, and. Uh, we, uh, we got it hopefully back up and running this morning, so uh, it's hanging in there, and uh, we're, uh, we're confident it's going to work for entry for us. Commander NASA Audio has asked us to ask you to turn off the mic every time you finish your answer. Finish your Thanks, and uh, it's Bill Harwood again, and I want to shift gears. I mean, that's the nuts and bolts of the computer thing this morning, but, uh, you know, I was driving in this morning, and I'm wondering if you guys, if the reality of this is set in. You've been asked these questions a million times about this being the last shuttle flight, the end of an era, and all of that. You've been so focused on the mission, I doubt you spent a lot of time thinking about that. But you're the tip of the spear, and I think a lot of folks would be curious. I mean, is, is this something that's sunk in yet, that this really is the end? Well, you know, I'll tell you, Bill, we talked a little bit about this pre-mission, but uh, as we, uh, you know, of course, we got a busy timeline, and there's not a whole lot of time to think about it, but we realize as we go from module to module here, I mean, literally, we've reached the point where we're saying, okay, it's the last train out of town. Is there anything else that needs to go back uh, to, uh, to the Kennedy Space Center or back to Houston before the, uh, before the shuttle program wraps up here? And when you say things like that, I think the reality of it really begins to sink in. You know, this is really the last train out of town. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, we're going to stay focused and very busy up until we undock. But, uh, you know, it's beginning to sink in. I mentioned that to you earlier, that I don't think the full uh, magnitude of everything is really going to hit us until after the wheels stop. Uh, this is Peter, and following up on that question, you know, everybody has asked every question under the sun about what it feels like to be flying this last mission. I'm just wondering from both of you, does this feel any different than you expected it to, and if so, how? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, Peter. I, you know, for me, uh, my last mission, my only mission, was STS-127, uh, 2JA. We, it was a 16-day mission. It was... Uh, five EVAs, and I honestly think this one has been busier, which is, uh, which, which surprises me a little bit. Uh, and, and I, you know, the obvious reason is we have three less sets of hands to, to help out. And I think that for me is the biggest surprise. And for you, Commander. Well, I'll tell you, uh, after, uh, after getting back here, it is, it's a very familiar environment. This is the third time I've been here. Um, uh, and I'd have to say, I, I agree with Doug to a certain extent, this has been incredibly busy. Uh, when there's a free moment, usually you can run over to the MPLM, our, uh, our cargo module, and you can always find something to do. And uh, even when there's nothing to do in the MPLM, we can go back to the closet, which is the permanent logistics module that they have here, and you can always help them reorganize here. So there, there is an awful lot of work left to do here. And the days, you know, it's been hard to believe. It's been almost a week since we launched, and the days are just clicking by. So uh, we're... Uh, <laughs> we got a lot to do in the next few days, but uh, we're looking forward to undocking and uh, especially that great view of the fly around. And I guess my question uh, to follow that up with is, is staying so busy keeping you from, uh, from thinking about, uh, you know, what this all means at this point? You're just concentrated on the mission. Yeah, that's actually a really good summary. You know, we're uh, kind of in the on-orbit mode right here. Now, uh, in that light, just a few days ago, uh, we were asked to downlink a few... Uh, videos that I think were embargoed on the ground, which means they'll be for future playback. But they're all to commemorate uh, the shuttle program. Uh, of course, there's a lot of folks that we've worked with throughout the years, both at the Kennedy Space Center and at the Johnson Space Center, who will shortly uh, be losing their jobs, and to, to thank them for everything they've done. So we have those sobering events uh, peppered throughout our timeline that help us, uh, you know, remind us that, uh, that this is really, uh, this is just about it. 
Commander, it's Bill Harwood again. You just brought a point up to me. The uh, I just got back from the Johnson Space Center where I've been for several days, and I have to tell you the mood there is sober is probably putting it optimistically. I mean, it's pretty depressed. I think there's a feeling of abandonment perhaps. It's not so much the end of shuttle but the gap before there's going to be anything else. What do you, what do you have to say to those guys, all the folks who've trained you have put these missions together over the years and made it happen right here at the brink at the very end? You know, uh, Bill, we were talking to a few folks uh, it, it, with some of our commercial providers here at the Kennedy Space Center just a, a couple weeks before launch, and I was actually very encouraged to hear that there's some hardware for uh, for uh, the Orion MPCV that's due for delivery at the Kennedy Space Center soon. You know, of course, we have our commercial folks at uh, SpaceX uh, and the other corp corporations uh, working on plans as well. So I think that that, that sobering attitude that you may sense is uh, really just a prelude. You know, everybody realizes the shuttle program, everything they've worked on for the last 30 years is coming to a close. But, you know, by and large, we have something right behind it. And I think once we can finally get over the fact that the shuttle is gone and, and its its day has come, I believe we'll begin to pick up the pieces and everyone will see that we really do have some vibrant programs out there that we're working on. So I know it's tough, but, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those wake type things. You have to come to terms with the end before you can really put on a new beginning. Uh, Commander Ferguson and uh, Pilot Doug Hurley, thank you so much for uh, the answers this morning. Safe rest of the flight. We look forward to your safe return here to KSC in uh, just under a week. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KYW-TV. Crew, this is Philadelphia. Can you hear us? Hey, Philadelphia, we have you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Well, Mr. Ferguson, nice to see you. Uh, it's great to see you, KYW. How's all my folks in Philadelphia doing? Terrific. You'll be speaking with Yuki Washington and Anne-Marie Green. And by, we're 10 seconds away. Well, the Space Shuttle Atlantis is the final shuttle mission, and it's in orbit with the International Space Station right now. And as you know, Shuttle Commander Chris Ferguson graduated from Archbishop Ryan High School and Drexel University. Chris and the shuttle's pilot, Doug Hurley, join us live now from the International Space Station to talk about the mission and how it's going. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Hey, good morning to all our Can folks in Philadelphia. Chris? How are you doing? Oh. There you go. Not bad. Doing fantastic. Please assess the mission thus far, how it's going, everything going to plan. So great to see the two of you. Oh, absolutely. We've had, uh, we've had a great time up here. Uh, from the, the last that the ground control folks told us, we're well ahead in uh, what we call transfer, the very act of getting all of our cargo, the 10,000 pounds of food and supplies that we brought up to sustain the International Space Station. We're well ahead in, in transferring that over, so uh, I'm happy. We've had some minor glitches with our general purpose computers, but we're recovering from them as well. So, yeah, you know, if I had to summarize, I think the mission's going really well. Well, Chris, uh, Yuki and I were joking that you, we read that you guys got a chance to sleep in for about an hour, and we were joking that we could not sleep in if we knew that something was wrong with the computer. We'd be a nervous <laughs> wreck. You know, the first thing they had us do after we woke up was uh, get to work trying to fix it. So uh, uh, I'll tell you, we got a great support team on, in Houston on ground control there, and uh, they did a great job. We got the computer up and running, and uh, we think it's going to work good for uh, re-entry in about a week or so. Fantastic. Now, Doug, I understand that you are from New York. How does a New York area fan get along with a Philadelphia area <laughs> sports fan up there in tight quarters in space? Everything going okay? Uh, it, it's going pretty well. We've we've had a couple discussions about the Yankees and the Phillies, but uh, nothing nothing that uh, resulted in any fisticuffs yet. 
<laughs> all right, let's keep it that way. Hey, gentlemen, when the shuttle lands and this thing is all over, what's the next step in, in space exploration, and what do you think and what do you want your roles to be in it in the future? Well, there's a lot going on. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to man the uh, International Space Station, at least for the next decade. So uh, we've got folks training and working there. So there's an opportunity to fly again in space doing that. We've also uh, got a, our Orion MPCV uh, crew vehicle that we're working on at NASA. We've got uh, commercial providers uh, eventually working on uh, commercial transportation to and from the International Space Station. And, uh, you know, I think Chris and I just you know, we would like to contribute wherever we can. We love the space business. Uh, you know, we've flown our entire lives, and uh, we'd like to continue uh, supporting that if we can. Beautiful. Chris, we just have to sort of double-check something. Yuki had some people talking to him on Facebook, and they mentioned that you may have talked at the U2 concert yesterday. Did you? Are you a big U2 fan? I, I, actually, I'm a huge U2 fan, and uh, I don't know if we talked at the U2 concert, but we did have, uh, there has been, U2's been a huge uh, proponent of the space program, and I know that they've been involved with uh, uplinks and downlinks many times in the past. That's fantastic. And before we go, I know, of course, we've all said that you've uh, graduated Archbishop Ryan High School, Drexel University, and when it comes to those two schools and your family, how did that moment, those moments back then, prepare you for what's going on right now, being a Philly guy? Oh, I got a wonderful education there in Philadelphia. That's where I developed a love of science and math. Drexel University, and uh, actually I have a little piece of the Fells Planetarium from the Franklin Institute on board. So all places I loved to spend time when I was a child and developed, like I said, a love of flying and a love of math and science. So uh, it's a great city, great city for technology, and I miss it a lot. Oh, gentlemen, we thank you so much for your efforts and your contributions to the space program, to you and the team and the rest of every, everyone up there. Continued success, and keep those uh, yankees Phillies conversations to a minimum. <laughs> we'll see you when you get back down on terra firma. Right. Take care. Godspeed. Take care. Take care. Godspeed. Take care. Have a great day. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KYW-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Associated Press. Atlanta Station, this is the Associated Press. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Well, good morning. Uh, talking to you from the Kennedy Space Center today. My first question for you, Commander. I'm wondering how unsettling was it to be awakened by the alarms last night, and how worried are you about the uh, general state of the computers, considering this is the second such failure? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, of course, the alarm went off about an hour or so after we fell asleep, and I think that that's when you're in your deepest state of sleep. So we all woke up and looked at it one another, and you know, we're wondering really what was going on. But we were up in the flight deck in no time, and uh, I'll tell you, the ground support team on the ground there, uh, you know, the Orbit Three shift, who usually works while we're sleeping, uh, they were all over the problem, uh, and uh, they had us put some corrective action, and we were back in bed in probably about a half hour or so. And then this morning, uh, we uh, we again working with uh, with our ground control folks in Houston, uh, got that general purpose computer up and running. So we're op very optimistic it's going to work for entry. Of course, we had an earlier problem with one of our GPCs as well. So uh, uh, we're doing well here, and I'm confident everything's going to look good uh, when we undock in a couple days. Well, thank you. Um, I know the two crews gathered last night aboard Atlantis for a special dinner. Was that the all-American meal with the chicken and beef brisket? And was there any chat during the dinner about this being the last shuttle flight? I'm just wondering if that sort of put a damper on the festivities. Actually, uh, you know, first of all, it was a fantastic meal. Uh, we shared it with our uh, our American, uh, Japanese, and Russian counterparts uh, on the mid deck, and uh, you know, we're we're friends from a long time back, so we shared you know more memories of uh, of our early years in the astronaut office. We uh, it's one of the few opportunities we get to talk to our Russian partners and and uh, share experiences that we've had in common with spacewalks and uh, some of the operations that we've done together. Um, we did reminisce a little bit about uh, the up 
luck coming into the, 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 the shuttle program. As a matter of fact, I do recall saying, hey, you know, this is the last joint meal that we're ever going to have aboard a space shuttle. And, uh, you know, we all, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a, a sobering, somber moment. But at the same time, we're extremely fortunate to have had 37 missions, I think, to the International Space Station now. So we're very lucky to have done this. And, and was that the all-American meal you enjoyed last night? Absolutely. Uh, I think it included, like you said, chicken, beef brisket. There was a lot of corn on the menu. We had some great appetizers, and then we had good old-fashioned apple pie for dessert. Oh, that sounds pretty good for space. Uh, another question for either of you or both. Yesterday, NASA announced that Steve Lindsay's last day at work is today. And I'm wondering, do you anticipate a lot more astronaut departures in the coming weeks following your mission? And what about you two? Um, are you both going to be sticking around in, uh, for the duration? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, I think it's really based on uh, each individual within the office and, you know, what their family's uh, desires are or where they want to live and what they want to do, uh, you know, after they've decided they've uh, done what they wanted to do in the astronaut office. I, you know, we, we have a typical attrition of, you know, six to eight people a year, and, and I think we're pretty much following that. Uh, you know, for me, Personally, you know, and we talked about this before, I'd, I'd love to stay around and help out. You know, we, we still have f plenty of flying opportunities aboard the International Space Station. And then, you know, we've got a chance to develop a new vehicle that's going to go beyond low Earth, low Earth orbit. So, I mean, from my standpoint, it's, it's a pretty exciting time to be here and, uh, and uh, continue to contribute and, and use the experience that we've gained on, on these shuttle flights uh, to press forward. Commander, you're, you haven't changed your plans to stay with NASA, have you? No, I have, uh, I have no plans. Uh, the last nine months have been extraordinarily focused on this mission and this mission alone. Um, you know, with regard to the attrition, um, a, a lot of our office, uh, probably about a third of our office, it, it was uh, former military pilots. And, uh, you know, pilots like to do what pilots like to do, and that's fly airplanes. And th there will be a gap here of uh, several years where, uh, you know, a pilot is going to want to do what a pilot wants to do. And I can certainly understand everybody has their own personal preferences preferences, um, and there'll, there'll be a little bit of lull in piloting activity until we get our next spacecraft. So, uh, you know, in the interim, I can understand why people make the choices that they do. I'm wondering, uh, I know there are several more days left in your flight, but so far, if you each had to choose, what is the one highlight of your mission, the memory that you're going to take back with you and keep forever? Well, I, I actually have two. Um, the first would be the, uh, uh, the EVA we did the other day where uh, Sandy and I were uh, running the uh, space station robotic arm from the cupola. And to have uh, both Mike and Ron fly right out in front of us, you know, within feet, uh, you know, it just, it, it really seemed like it was out of a science fiction movie. You know, you could see the expression on their faces as they're riding the arm wherever they were going. Uh, and it was just, uh, you know, it's kind of seared into my memory. And then the other one actually happened last night. Uh, we were flying uh, west of Australia, kind of at the bottom of our orbit, and uh, saw an incredible uh, southern lights uh, aurora. Uh, and, you know, it was the best one I've seen uh, in, in my two space flights. And it was just unbelievable, the view we had out, out the cupola. I'll, uh, I'll share my personal uh, uh, moment, and it was the same one I had on my last flight. Um, you know, as, you, uh, as we rendezvous with the space station, you approach it from below, and you, you pause there uh, to do uh, the rotation maneuver. And it's just that moment, as you're poised there beneath this incredibly um, mammoth space station, and it really is, it's just a feeling of, of, of awe, and you're humbled by what humans can create when they work together uh, to do things in space. Uh, it's just, a, it's, a, it's, an, um, it's an incredibly memorable moment, and uh, I will never, ever, ever uh, duplicate it or forget it. Well, thank, thank you very much, both of you. Godspeed to you and your crew, and Godspeed to Space Shuttle Atlantis. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.
Thank you, CBS Radio, KYW-TV, and the Associated Press. Atlantis crew on the ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Good job, guys.